Chicago investors, if you're looking to increase the amount of cash flow you've been accustomed to, I want you to watch this entire show. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I'm helping Chicago investors increase their cash flow, right? Like a lot of markets in the U.S., folks out in Chicago, you guys are feeling the pinch, man. You're feeling the pinch of 2021. Your cash flow goals are not being realized. Your money just isn't going that far, right? We got labor shortages, cutting down the amount of new builds, squeezing the inventory, making prices higher, right? You guys really are having a lot of trouble getting that cash flow. So a lot of you do what my client Roman has done. You look to out-of-state markets, markets that are cheaper, markets that have cash flow properties that can hit or exceed your goals. And guess what, folks? You're in luck because my team, we could help you. We could be your on-the-ground uh, partners, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of this stuff. I run the largest scattered site real estate portfolio in the Cleveland market, right? The properties, they're cheap in Cleveland. But if you buy wrong, you could still lose your ass, man. Don't think just because they're so cheap, you can't make mistakes. And that's what this show is all about. It's about helping you guys navigate that market after we figure out what makes sense for you we then offer you our turnkey services to keep that investment going. In the property I've got today, this is a cash-flowing duplex that is ridiculously cheap and can bring in as much as $1,700 a month in rent. You're going to need under $30,000. Let's jump into the numbers after this commercial break. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the numbers, okay? This property, 4010 Bush, Cleveland, 4 for 109. Just hit the market today. We're probably going to be in a bidding war. We're probably going to need to move quick, right? There is going to be a lot of people looking to take this sucker down. List price, $114,000. $900. I want you to pay that. As a matter of fact, I want you to go $100 over, right? Let's just shoot them an offer of $115K. It's like 99 cents versus a dollar, right? Something's $1.99. It feels a lot cheaper than if you're asked to pay $2 for it. So when we present our offer to the seller, right? 115. They're like, whoa, we're only asking 114, right? Makes them feel good. Gives us a better shot at taking it down because this. <laughs> Woo! This is a freaking earner, dude. You got to do what you got to do to take this one down. You might even want to go above that price, maybe as high as 120, but I think 115 should take it down, okay? Now, uh, it's very nice property, and it's been renovated recently, right? It's got the exact type of um, like look I would want it to have, right? You got the agreeable gray walls. You got the white trim, right? You got the neutral... Uh, the neutral vinyl allure type flooring in the kitchen, right? That's great. Nothing super fancy, but this is what we want for these type of rentals, man. The hardwoods throughout, dude. This is this is looking good, right? So at your next turnover, it's not like you have to completely overhaul it, right? We got new updated fixtures right here in that uh, <clears throat> bathroom, right? Uh, I don't really like seeing carpet in the bedroom, but hey, it's already there. It's not the end of the world. Oh, plus two. It comes with like a gigantic ass bong, right? I'm pretty sure that's a huge bong. Or or it could either be a bong or it could be something that you put quarters in. Hard to tell from this photo. Either way, the sucker still makes money, right? So let's keep it moving, people. Oh, wait. Well, check that out, dude. Look at that. That's a purple fan. That's actually kind of cool. I've never seen that before. I like that. My daughter would dig that. Anyway. Uh, the rest uh, of the property, right? It's looking fresh. Uh, this is uh, photographs of the other unit prior to them placing a tenant, okay? It's, this is just what you want, right? Nothing fancy, nothing knocking your friggin' socks off, but this is exactly what you want, dude. Updated electrical. Like, it's already vinyl-sided. That's really good. You don't have to worry about lead-based paint issues on the outside of your property, right? And the best part about this, okay, the units, 
They're three bed, one bath, okay? Both tenants are paying six hundo, right? Six hundo is under market rent for a two one. Normally on two ones, we are getting seven fifty. But these are three ones, and the units look very nice. So it's not like uh, you need to do an insane overhaul to get market rent. Market rent, like a market rent on this sucker, huge, huge, seventeen hundred a month. That's twenty thousand four hundred a year, right? Of that twenty thousand four hundred a year, I believe your NOI should be a little bit over ten, ten thousand four hundred thirty-seven. If we get it at the one fifteen that I talked about, right? You put down less than 30 G's, okay? 28,750, bank kicks in 86,2 and a quarter. That would be a 21% cash on cash return or a 9.1 cap, right? And that also includes additional money you're getting now, right? While your tenants are in there, you're not spending money on vacancy, but I'm having you not count a certain amount of money. I'm having you not count over $1,000 a year of money that comes in now towards your vacancy because eventually you'll have a vacancy. I'm having you not count over $1,000 a year towards your capital expenditures, right? Those electric panels, they look brand new, okay? But don't forget, right? We got a 30-year roof on these properties, right? Every 30 years, you're dropping 7 Gs. I don't believe we have a brand new roof on this sucker, so I'm sure in the next decade, you're dropping that money. Your furnaces, they last 30 years. They cost about three grand, right? So you got to save money towards that stuff. Hot water tanks, there's two of them in a duplex, folks. That's $1,000 every 15 years, right? So you're probably getting more money over the first few years of owning this property that I'm even calculating on your return because I know those big charges are coming. That's just part of the game when you own properties, right? But this thing, that's why there's going to be a friggin' bidding war. This thing is nice. It's got the three beds. You could max the rent out at eight fifty a unit. That's friggin' amazing. Now, does it make sense to immediately jack your tenants' rents from six to eight fifty? No, that would be crazy, right? Even though the units are in good shape, you don't want to like force a turnover, especially when you're still bringing in twelve hundred in rent, right? What I'd probably recommend you do: sign them up to a one-year lease once you take it over, keep the rent where it is. Then after that, start going up fifty, seventy-five, even a hundred bucks. Uh, a month, right? They know they can't get no three-bedroom units in these neighborhoods anywhere else. So I don't think they're going to want to leave, but you don't want to shock them immediately with a huge $250 increase. Last but not least, before I get out of here, uh, I want to show you something as far as the neighborhood goes. This, I really like this particular neighborhood. Now, it's not a high-end neighborhood by any means, right? We talk about the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, okay? Google that if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's probably also in the show notes below, and I know it's on the tools and resource section of HoltonWeiss.com, right? I grade all the neighborhoods in the Cleveland area, A to F scale. A is the least risky. F is the most risky. A, neighborhoods, you're not going to find rentals, right? I know you guys come to the Cleveland market because stuff is cheap, right? There ain't no cheap properties in A-grade neighborhoods, folks. Like, you guys might find this shocking but we also have rich people in the Cleveland area too, right? So there's half a million, $750,000 million houses, right? So that don't make no sense for you guys to even think about, okay? When you're in the rental game though, right? I would consider this to be about a D neighborhood, but it's my favorite D neighborhood, right? D neighborhoods, I think it's very important to put Section 8 tenants in there when you can because it eliminates your risk because uh, the biggest risk of a D neighborhood is people not paying rent, right? Section 8 eliminates that risk. And if you're going to invest in a D neighborhood, I love the Clark Fulton neighborhood because this is the house. This right here. I'm sorry, right here. I went too far. This is the house. This right here. This is Metro Health. Big old hospital, big old campus that's getting a billion dollars of investment going towards their campus in the surrounding area of building low-income housing, right? On top of that, if you zoom the map out a little bit, right above here, you got Tremont, Ohio City, Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater, Lake Erie, downtown. Those are all the areas in the Cleveland market where people talk about the resurgence of Cleveland. So you're directly south of all the hot spots that have already gentrified, and you're getting a billion dollars of investment into your low-income neighborhood. So if you're going to make a bet on a low-income neighborhood to get some cash flow but also some appreciation in the future, have your cake and eat it too, cannot guarantee it. But if I'm going to speculate, I'm going to speculate on the one neighborhood in Cleveland that's bordering a lot of gentrification and is getting a billion dollars of investment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.